you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, it's Mr. T with another algebra tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be introducing a class of functions called polynomials. Now we just finished a unit on quadratics and they are uh, one kind of polynomial. In this unit we will be extending our polynomials to more complicated uh, functions. So what is a polynomial? Well it's a collection of algebraic terms. So for example down here that's an algebraic term. The terms typically consist of a constant, a variable, and an exponent. Now the terms may just only be constants or they may only have a letter without the coefficient. And they are combined by adding and subtracting. Now to be a polynomial, the exponents must be non-negative and they must be integers. So based on that definition, Let's look at these and decide which ones are polynomials. This one is a polynomial and it's a quadratic uh, expression like we had in the last. Now this one is not a polynomial because if we tried to put it into the form using exponent properties, if I move this x to the top, it would have a negative one exponent which is non-negative. So this one is not a polynomial. This one has a fractional exponent, so it's not a polynomial. This one has a negative exponent, so not a polynomial. And this one is a polynomial because this is a constant. So if this was a function, this would be a function that is a constant function, which is also one of the kinds of polynomials. Now when we're Working with polynomials, we're going to always put our final answers in standard form. So to put a polynomial in standard form, we've got to do two things. We have to combine all like terms, terms that have the same exponents, and then we're going to arrange them in decreasing order of the exponents. So if we put this expression as a polynomial in standard form, we would first, the highest exponent are the x squareds, and there's two of those, so we would combine those, so we get negative 2x squared. And now we have these x terms, we would combine those, so it's minus x. And we have these constant terms, and now we have a polynomial that is in standard form. Now when we're looking at a polynomial, we might want to describe or classify it, and we typically look at three attributes of a polynomial. We look at the leading coefficient, so back in our last polynomial, when it's in standard form, the number in front of the highest exponent term is the leading coefficient. And the leading coefficient, similar to when we used looked at the graphs of quadratics can tell us whether the graph is going to be opening up or down or if it's not a uh, even uh, function, if it's an odd function, whether it's going uphill or downhill. It also ties into how narrow or wide or how steep the uh, function is if you remember about our uh, vertical stretches. One of the most common things we look at is the degree of the polynomial. The degree of the polynomial is the highest exponent in the polynomial. So in our last example, this one is of degree 2. And in the next slide, we will learn that there's a name for some of the degrees, and this one is quadratic, and we knew that because we were uh, studying quadratic functions in our last unit. The degree indicates sort of which function family inside of polynomials, whether it's uh, quadratics or cubics, etc. And also each degree has a distinct shape of its graph when we uh, sketch the graphs. And sometimes it's useful to talk about how many terms there are in a 
uh, polynomial and might help to indicate what type of factoring we might do, for example. So these are some terminologies that we will be using. So a polynomial of degree 0, which means it only has a constant term, would be a constant polynomial. Degree 1 linear, etc. You can read these. These terms are the most common. These are used sometimes. And then number of terms, a single term would be a monomial, binomial, trinomial. And now we could have polynomials of higher degree than 5 or more terms than 3, and then we would just be describing them by giving those numbers. So if we look at a couple examples here and name them, now we would want to put this in standard form first. This would be the first term. So our leading coefficient is negative 6. Our degree is 2 and the number of terms equals 3 because there's nothing to be combined here. So this would be a quadratic trinomial. This one has one term and it's degree 2. This would be quadratic monomial. And this one is degree 5, and it would be a quintic trinomial. Of these parameters, probably, and then the leading coefficient would have been here, would have been 3. Probably the degree is the most informative in terms of what the function's like. And then probably next is the leading coefficient, which we'll be using when we go to sketch the graphs. Now when we're working with polynomials, we need to be looking at uh, mathematical operations with polynomials. We can add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, etc. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about adding, subtracting, and multiplying. In a later determinal, uh, a tutorial, we'll be talking about um, division. So let's look at some examples here. Really, we could just treat this. We did this earlier in the year. Just I gave you some uh, algebraic expressions and said simplify them. So here, in this case, we group the two polynomials in parentheses. So we could also view this as a, this polynomial minus this polynomial. And we are going to simplify. So this parentheses, since there is a plus 1 out here, we can just get rid of with those parentheses we don't even really need to pay attention to. But this parentheses that's in front of, I mean, this negative in front of this parentheses says we need to distribute. So if I distribute this minus, this will become a plus and will change the sign of everything inside those parentheses. Now that that's a plus, we can ignore those parentheses. So now we're going to combine the like terms, and at the same time, I'm going to do it by a degree so that we put it in standard form. So we can combine these two uh, fourth power terms. So I'm going to have here 2k to the fourth. And now we combine our third power term. So we have minus 4k cubed. This is a 4 here. I'm sorry about my writing. And our squared terms. So we have plus 2k squared. So now we have added the two polynomials and put the answer in standard form. Over here we're going to be the same thing. We've got to distribute this minus through this parentheses. So check the opposite of everything in that parentheses. And now we have a minus here also. So we have minus, it's a minus, and a plus. And we're going to do the same thing. So if we scan here we have this uh, fourth power term. So I've used that up now. Now we see, if, do we have any third power terms? We have here just one. And now squared terms, we have three of those. So we have negative 4 plus 7 is positive 3, plus 6 would be positive 9m squared. And we have now used our squared terms. We have one linear term. And we have 
one constant term. So now we have a quartic uh, polynomial with five terms. And again, it's in standard form because our exponents decrease. Now, in this case, we have all the terms. In standard form, we could have something. I mean, I'm just making this up. But we don't have to have every possible power. So this would be in standard form. We're missing the x squared terms and the, and the, I mean, and the x cubed term. But this would, again, be in standard form. And lastly, multiplying, we're going to be using the distributive property and then putting in standard form. Remember, when we are multiplying terms with exponents, one of our exponent properties, if you have a base to a power and you're multiplying that times that same base to a power, remember, we add our exponents. So I have to distribute here this 3a squared towards both of these terms. So 3a squared times 5a is 15a cubed. And now 3a squared times this is negative 3a squared. Now I've got to distribute my 4a. So I've got 20a squared and then minus 4a. And finally, we will distribute this negative 8. So I get negative 40a and plus 8. And now we have to write our final answer by combining like terms. So our highest power term, these combined, these combined. And we now have multiplied our trinomial times our binomial and we have this. Now when we look at a problem like this, remember we cannot just square this and square this. Exponent properties do not work like that when we have addition and subtraction. So we want to rewrite this as that factor, that binomial, times itself. And now we can again use the distributive property. So 4p times 4p is 16p squared. 4p times negative 1, negative 1 times the 4p, and negative 1 times negative 1, and combine our like terms here. Now the last one is the same thing. We're using FOIL or the distributive property, but this time we have two letters, so I just want to show how that works. So 7a times a. 7a times negative 7b would be negative 49ab. Now, when we have multiple letters, we usually list them in alphabetical order. And now we have negative 2b times a will be negative 2ab. And finally here, this times this will be um, 14b squared. Now, when we have two letters, the first letter will go in decreasing order. And the other letter, the second letter, will go in increasing order. And since these both have an AB, we can combine those. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. So this lesson is fairly simple. It's using skills that we've known for a long time. But now we're putting them in the context of polynomials. So have a good day and see you around. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?